Again, I have two setups. Uh, this is a set of Corsa Competizione and the Ferrari 488 GT3 Evo. And one is an understeer setup and one is an oversteer setup while changing only one setting. This is a crash they had with a, a different setup. And to the setups, let's see. So, not this setup. Let's load the correct one. This one. And these are the settings tires. Electronics, fuel strategy, mechanical grip, dampers, and aero. And if you notice, this ride height is much lower than this spa ride height. This track is a lot more flat than spa, and it, it is possible to run really low. I'm not going to use these settings, but I tested them out to see how they would handle. And I found that at these specific ride heights, this is slammed to the ground, it won't go any lower, The and, and the same spring rates as SPA, but a little bit softer anti-roll, the car will only ever corner on the bump stops because the anti-roll is not quite stiff enough and the car is so low that when it turns it hits the bump stops. And this is the oversteer setup. The, Bump stop rate is at 300 newtons, and this is just to test how soft I can go. Um, that's what I made. The reason why I made this setup was to test how soft on the, the bump stop I can go and still control the car. And I found I can't control the car at all with these bump stop settings. And I don't. I don't think it's hitting the bump stops on the on the rear. But the if you notice the red line. Let's go to this left front bump stop range, when I change it, it changes the red line. That's the bump stop. This is at 2. And so I don't think it's bottoming out in the rear at that specific bump stop range in the rear. So I didn't really test the, the rear bump stop rate. Now onto the understeer setting. The everything's the same except for the bump stops. And this bump stop ratio, or not ratio, but bump stop rate is 1400 as opposed to 300 newtons. And it understeers. And I'm going to display that now. And everything else is, is the same and I'll go through it just to, so you can double check. Tires, electronics, fuel, mechanical grip, dampers, and arrow. Okay, I'm going to start with the oversteery setting. It's going to load. Tires are cold, or they're fresh off the tire warmers, so the, the heat has not transferred through the tire correctly. So I'm going to do a lap under the limit, at least for me. Take it nice and gingerly on throttle, don't turn in the steering wheel too much. Brake early. Get some heat in the tires. They really underdrive the car in that turn. And this turn. I had that crash earlier in another lap, so I bumped into the foam board. And 
testing these over theory settings is really ruining, let's stay in a second here, really ruining my car control, um, what do you call that, value on the top right corner, the CC, this car control. There's some oversteer. Okay, the tires are at least warmed up somewhat. I'm gonna try to take this turn at how I should expect the car to perform. Brake a little bit early. Turn the wheel to understeer. That's all right. Wasn't too bad. Okay, it's under steering. Pretty good. Too much throttle. It's handling pretty well. some oversteer. See if I can take this full pace. There's this uncatchable oversteer. I should be able to take that pretty much a uh, single lift off throttle and turn into understeer through the apex and then throttle out but it oversteers. Now, in a different sim, that might be desirable, the oversteer, but um, with these specific tire physics, any amount of oversteer is very difficult to catch, unless you're going slow speed. Stay in second. So I should be able to take this flat out. Maybe. Yep. Let's see if I can break deep into turn one. So I'm gonna trail break really deep, probably too deep for fast time. Well, not bad. It's actually not that bad. For my previous testing, it was pretty bad. I don't know, maybe I was not doing enough laps to get heat in the tires. This is not, not too terrible. Corner on throttle. Oh, that's oversteer on throttle. So those, that's an example of what the physics do when the car slides even a little bit and that has nothing to do with the setup but a good showcase of why you don't want to tune in too much oversteer in this game now on to the other setup this one and this is the one with the stiffer bump stop rate so the first one that i just drove the front bump stop rate was 300 this one is 1400 newtons. And again, this is a reminder that uh, this is a, a setup that has the suspension all the way lower to the, to the ground. There is no more suspension travel that I can lower the car to. So again, the tires are cold, or they're, they're only as warm as the tire warmers were. Need to do a, do a lap to get a good, a good test of what the actual grip is like when driving the car for a race situation. Okay, 
into it's real easy real easy to oversteer here as well as here don't want to take that curb not only does it uh, negate the lap time but it uh, causes a lot of oversteer second gear don't want to take that curb either stay in second and some oversteer All right, full throttle. And another note is that I'm running as much aerodynamic oversteer that I personally can control. So I cannot control any more oversteer with the aerodynamics. So that was understeer there. I broke a little too deep. stability through here too much push on throttle maybe I can soften the front spring but I certainly need to make the front anti roll stiffer and raise the right height Still don't want to take this too quick. It oversteers a lot there. So lift throttle, a little too much curb, and understeer into throttle out. So that was the difference in that one particular corner where I was able to showcase the actual difference of the bump stop. is there's a high speed third gear corner. There's no brakes into the corner. Just a slight lift. You wanna coast on throttle through the corner and it should understeer because you have to tune in understeer. Uh, anyway, it should understeer through that corner so that it's controllable through the corner. Technically, more, ro more controllable rotation is faster. However, if the rotation is not controllable, it's not faster to have more rotation in any particular corner. Because you have to complete the lap to get a good lap time. And if the car rotates too much, then there's, it's really difficult to complete the lap. So anyway, this particular setup is relying purely on the, the front bump stops because it's so low. Even the spring rate isn't doing much, it's just absorbing the bumps. So what I think I need to do is increase the front edge roll a lot and probably decrease the front spring rate and raise the right height as well. So that, uh, oh, no brakes, a little bit of curb, understeer and controllable. Anyway, raise the right height, increase the front to enter roll, decrease the front spring. And what that'll hopefully do is increase mid corner stability while not running on the bump stops because I'm raising the right height. And then reduce the amount of push on throttle by having a softer front spring rate. And I can't do anything with the dampers because the front rebound is already maxed out. So I, like normally, if the rebound is not maxed out, you could increase the front rebound damping to get less push on throttle. But like I said, it's already, damp it's already maxed out, so I can't do that. So let's go back to the other setting. I've cleared a couple laps. I should be able to get into the 1 minute 50 second range with this setting. 
I'm going to do another drive with the oversteer setting just to showcase the difference. Triangle AOMAX 101 load. Oh, and uh, go through it again. Mechanical grip, bump stop rate is at 300 newtons. Everything else is the same. Continue. So another point to bring up is this is why it's very important in race cars, particularly GT cars and um, or the Le Mans cars, endurance racing. I guess it'd be the future would be the future cars anyway. It would be um, what are they called? Hypercars, the hypercar class. It's very important to be able to tune the bump stops because the cars are going to be running on the bump stops, and particularly in Gran Turismo, is that feature cannot be tuned into the car. So there's only the whatever value they decided the bump stops would be is the only option that the bump stops can be. Because they are simulated, I just don't know what the, the rate, the spring rate is on the bump stop. So it's a rubber bushing in the damper, it's literally around the damper shaft. So let's see if I can take this like I took this corner in the other setup. So there's some oversteer and rotation. Let's lock the brakes, get the car stopped, and spin it around. So again, I'm just lowering my car control rating by driving the, this particular setup because I can't control the car around the high speed sections. I can underdrive the car and control it. That's of course no problem, but I want to push the car to its limit. And in order to do that, I need a understeery setup. So anyway, what I'm probably going to do with an actual setup video for this car on this track is max out the rear ride height and adjust the adjust the aerodynamic oversteer purely with the front ride height. Like lower the front ends while the, the rear end is at max ride height. That is because I don't want to be adjusting the ride heights for every track, even though that's probably ideal. I just want to get on the track and drive every track and learn to learn every track and all that. But, um, and it would be better to do that with more suspension travel and relying less on the bump stops. But I, I think the bump stop tuning is unavoidable. With specifically GT cars that right, <laughs> excuse me, that ride so low to the ground, and hopefully they get bump stop tuning in Gran Turismo because it's kind of necessary. Let's see if I can clear this this corner too. There's some oversteer. I got the under, I caught it, but I didn't get a good exit. Let's see this one. Lifts, a lot of curb, too much curb. That time I got understeer on the curb. Damn, I took too much curb there. Oh, late on the brake. And I think that's all I want to talk about with this particular video. Till the next one.